Hi guys, welcome back to my Outlander review, episode 12, The Back Row. If you watch the inside the episode, you know that means boss. And there's a lot to be said about the boss in this episode, but let's start at the beginning. We have another cold open where we're taken back to when young Ian was kidnapped. And we find out that the Portuguese pirates that took him were hired by the Bacra to go to Silky Island and find her treasure box. It's not clear how long Ian's journey has been, but we do find out that he is a week ahead of Jamie and Claire. When Ian arrives, he's put in a cell with two other boys, but he finds out that there once were six, and those that go to see the Bacra never return. He's trying so hard to be strong and keep his cool, even as a naked woman emerges from a bloodbath. We hear her voice before we see her face, but that was enough for me to know that it was Galus Duncan. The whole episode has this eerie, kind of creepy feel to it, but this scene ups that, especially with the music and the dripping blood. As Galus tries to seduce young Ian, she has him drink this tea that forces him to tell the truth made for her by a witch doctor. But who knows if that's true, she probably made it herself. Poor Ian can't help but tell her that Jamie is his uncle and probably has the sapphire that she's looking for. As usual, Galus is up to something by having her way with virgin boys and then killing them. It looks like she's getting ready for some kind of sacrifice, but that may or may not be tied to a prophecy for telling the rise of a Scottish king. In order to do the reading, she needs three sapphires that used to belong to Dougal Mackenzie. I'm curious, who told Galus that Dougal died in the Battle of Culloden? Either way, she tells this story to the brother and sister fortune teller duo, Archibald and Margaret Campbell. Before their reveal, we're taken back to Claire and Jamie, who have finally arrived in Jamaica. They continue the search for young Ian with a little help from one of cousin Jared's employees. He directs them to the slave market, where Jamie does find out that the new governor has purchased the slaves the Brucia was carrying. While at the slave market, Claire witnesses the disgusting treatment of a male slave named Temeraire who she tries to defend but causes a fight to break out. Jamie ends up purchasing Temeraire, but they plan to free him once they can find a safe place to do it. In the meantime, their new companion is enlisted in the quest to find young Ian, and having already received their invitation to the governor's ball, Jamie and Claire plan to go to gain more information about young Ian's whereabouts. Fergus, Marsali, Claire and Jamie, and Mr. Willoughby are all dressed up in some of Claire and Jamie's old Paris clothing. Unfortunately for Mr. Willoughby, he's really only there as a distraction to keep eyes off of Jamie and their mission. At the door, Claire runs into Archibald Campbell and inquires about his sister Margaret, who we later see develop some sort of romance with Mr. Willoughby. Perhaps the sweetest moment in this episode happens while they're waiting in line to meet the new governor. Claire comments on Fergus and Marsali's newlywed romance and recalls when she and Jamie were like that. As they look into each other's eyes, it's clear that the passion is still there, just a little hidden under their aged exterior. But the real eye catcher of this episode is Lord John Gray, the new governor of Jamaica, but an old friend. I definitely did not call this happening. But I was thinking the same thing as Jamie. Where is Willie? It is sad that he's not in Jamaica, and I don't think that Jamie will be there long enough for him to get there. Claire interjects herself into their somewhat awkward reunion to find out that Lord John was basically stationed in Jamaica as one of England's outposts, but she also takes notice of a beautiful blue sapphire that he wears as a reminder of his friendship with Jamie. Later, John and Claire have a conversation where Claire basically stakes her claim on Jamie. And it's clear that John has held Jamie in his mind and his heart since their last meeting. And he's taken off guard by meeting Claire. Jamie was right about the ghosts that keep coming back from their past because Claire sees Galus and she almost disappears but leads Claire outside for a reunion. Claire already knew that Galus was allowed to live until the baby was born, but Galus fills in the rest about Dougal helping her escape and how she watched the old woman whose body took her place burn just so she could say she witnessed her own execution. 
She tries to play the friend by offering Claire her help in finding young Ian, but it's really Claire that ends up helping Galus by leading her to the missing sapphire worn by Lord John. Galus hurries away to find the Campbells so she can have her reading now, and is able to co-horse Lord John into having his fortune told and giving Margaret his sapphire to hold. Margaret tells of a 200 year old baby that must be killed in order for a Scot to wear a crown. I guess we'll get that explained soon enough. For now, the more pressing issue is getting Jamie out before he is seen by Captain Leonard. And they almost do. Before they leave, Temerara is able to find out that young Ian was taken to a Mistress Abernathy of Rose Hall, AKA Galus Duncan. On their way to Rose Hall, they free Temeraire to be with the escaped slaves in the mountains. But before they can continue their journey, Captain Leonard shows up and arrests Jamie. I don't have much more to say about this episode. The season is almost over and it looks like the finale is gonna be a rough one. What are you guys speculating for the finale? Tell me in the comment section. Okay, well that's my review for this week. But before I go, this week's fan art comes from Laura Ewing Ferrer, Quality Time. You can find Laura on Instagram at Laura Ewing Ferrer and on Twitter at Laura EWF. Thanks, Laura. And thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more awesomeness.